What is up guys? This is Migo Tech here with another video. So I wanted to take a little bit of time to talk about the five ways that you can improve as an engineer. I'll talk a little bit about five tips that I feel you need to need if you want to become a better engineer. So let's get right into it. Number one, code reviews. Code reviews are super important if you want to become a better engineer because they help you see how other engineers are performing and help you to improve your own code. So what, what do I mean by that? I mean, check out how other senior engineers are writing their code, how they're putting it up, and what, the, what it looks like. Generally, you'll see that really experienced engineers will divide their code into really small bits of code and then put that up to be reviewed. And the code is pretty simple, it's pretty straightforward to read, and you can just quickly review it and then accept it. Um, what you'll also see is how senior engineers divide a much larger project into smaller work streams and functions. And you'll also see just how they go about in each bit of code implementing the things that they do. You'll often see that they'll use more advanced concepts than what you would do, and you'll see what types of things that they do from their syntax to the programming um, mechanisms that they use. One example is that more senior engineers will tend to use functional programming functions as opposed to just iterating through for loops. So they might use a for each or like a, a map. You'll often see that they have much more well-tested code. Each bit of code is only one focused on one thing as opposed to trying to do a whole bunch of things, which makes it much harder to review. And the important thing is that code reviews also help you. So when you put up your code, it's helping other engineers, it's helping you learn from other engineers. Other engineers can comment on your code and say, oh, maybe you should consider doing this. Oh, this is a good way to do it. Have you also considered this? And from that, you can improve the way that you write your code because you have insight from other people as to how they would write it. Number two, learn from other engineers. This includes a lot of different things. I think code review is one of those things that falls sort of under it, but the idea is to have to talk with other people and learn from their perspective as to what is the best way to write some code or if they have any tips or tricks or find a mentor. So for example, you might learn from an engineer that they happen to use some special tool that improves their workflow by some amount and you can learn from that and use that tool from them. You can learn from another engineer some architectural patterns. Say you're planning on implementing something. Grab the other engineer, talk it over, and you'll often find that they have a different idea about how you can implement it that might be even cleaner than what you were originally anticipating. So being able to talk with other people and get that insight from them as to like what is important is really helpful for you to grow as an engineer. There are a lot of really great engineers out there. There's people that have been doing coding for many, many years, and they have a lot more experience than some other people do. And it's really worthwhile to try to reach out to them. Generally, what I would try to find is a mentor who is really intelligent and really good at the code that they write, but also has good people skills. You want someone that you can learn from, that has good insight, and is easy to communicate with, as well as strong technically. So what I recommend is trying to ask them, maybe what are their tips or tricks? What do they see in your code? What do they see as ways to improve? Oftentimes, I think a mentor is really helpful if they actually are somewhat working with you because they can see what you're doing in your code, how you can improve it, and what are the next steps to take. So reach out to other people, and you'll see that you'll learn a whole lot more if you happen to talk with other people than if you're just coding off separately. Number three, this is really important for engineers, and that is to hit the like and subscribe button on this video. It uh, helps me to know that you want more content like this, so that way I can keep delivering this content for you to learn more. Cool? Number three, take on more challenging and interesting projects. It's really important if you want to grow your engineering skills that you take on more challenging and interesting projects because it helps you grow more as an engineer by giving you much more difficult technical problems to solve. I know it's really easy when you first start off that you want to just fix some bugs and then you want to do some smaller things and it's hard to feel like you can take on some challenging projects, but don't fall into that trap. Try to take on challenging projects as soon as you can and really be focused on taking on larger scoped, independent work um, without needing any hand-holding. The point of it is that if you want to take these larger scoped projects, you'll learn a whole lot more from them than if you happen to take 
um, like a bug fix based off of like the levels based off of the levels that different companies have we have more junior engineers who are like new grads who focus mostly on fixing smaller bugs implementing features we have middle-level engineers and they focus on building a whole work stream so building out a project um, and then we have senior engineers and their focus is taking a ambiguous problem and turning that into a codable solution so working on the full end um, of a platform, divide, finding ways from the data, working with design, leading the direction of it. All that is important. The thing that's important is that you develop the sense of independence. You're not necessarily reliant on getting someone else's feedback to implement something. It's definitely a good thing to do because as I mentioned earlier, learning from other people will help you improve as a programmer, but it's not the most important thing. The most important thing is that you're independent, that you work on things, without needing any hand-holding, whether it's from your manager or more senior engineers. And you learn so much more because really that's where we're learning comes from. It's from having to learn from yourself, from having to do it yourself. Coding is one of those things you can't just read about. You can't just talk about with other people to improve your coding exponentially. You have to actually build things out. And when you build things out, you really understand better how to build things in a stabler, more effective way. This one is going to be a bit controversial, but number four, change often. People get really comfortable in what they're doing, so they don't want to change what they're working on. And that's a problem because when you get into that sort of comfort level, then you're not really learning as much. The point of it is that you want to change often enough that you're learning something new. One example for me was I changed um, from working on one of the Instagram ads teams to working on Instagram search and hashtags and I learned a whole lot about the different ways that you would implement things even on something like Instagram where the, we have pretty similar code. The point is that different teams have different ways of doing things. You learn a whole lot more from the other people that you meet, from the way that they code, and you get better as an engineer. To bring it even a step further, there was an engineer that I knew who was really senior and he would basically work on a project for six months and then switch teams to another project for six months and then keep doing this. And he would use whatever he learned from previous teams to improve the new team. And what that did was enabled him to know, for example, what is the best way to work on a project to get maximal impact, as well as to learn a whole lot. Because if you're constantly working on really impactful projects from one area and then you learn a lot from that team and then you bring that to your next team and you keep doing that, you have a much wider perspective as to how to build a great project, how to build a good culture, how to do a whole lot of things. I think it comes from the idea of different experiences. The more different experiences that you have, the better off you'll understand what to do in a case where something unusual has happened or you have to implement something that you haven't seen before because you've already had experience building different things. So change often, whether that means tech stack, projects, teams, just learn as much as you can and you'll become a much better engineer if you're you know, constantly moving around, learning different projects. If you keep working on the same feature or the same project for years on end, you're going to stagnate. That's just a matter of fact. So you need to change things if you want to learn. Number five, refactor code. Now, it's easy to write code. Um, code is cheap. You can pretty much quickly write up something that works. But to make code better is one of the more challenging things. And refactoring code happens all the time. Sometimes you need to refactor code because it doesn't handle the way that you anticipate the new code to work. So what you want to do is you want to refactor that code. And you want to find a good balance between properly scoping the code, between being generic and coupled to the use case that you have in mind. So when you refactor code, you get a better understanding of why this code was written one way, and you also have a better understanding of how to support future cases of the code, how to improve um, code in the future so that you don't have to refactor. Then maybe you can write it once and then get a sense of building it. Refactoring also helps you with just maintaining the code. Code gets pretty nasty over time just because people keep adding little bits of code, patching on things and then the code becomes pretty ugly, it's hard to work with, hard to maintain. Refactoring helps you clear all that out and start with newer, cleaner slate. 
So that wraps up our five tips for software engineers. I hope you guys really liked it. And please leave a like and a subscribe if you like the video, if you like the channel. And thank you guys so much for supporting me. It really means a lot. And see you next time. Peace.